Hi, my name is Eddie Johnson. I uh, just want to bring you this video for uh, AFib and athletes. Um, myself, a little history on me, I'm an athlete. Um, but mostly just if you're a, a younger person who's active and you're having issues with AFib like I had, um, I just wanted to put this video out there for just for as a resource so you can um, kind of draw off of it and uh, you know maybe make your own decisions with it. So a little background on me, I've, I've played um, uh, professional football on and off last few years, uh, NFL, CFL, um, as a punter, if you consider that an athlete. And uh, I had some trouble with AFib. I had an episode in 2009, and then since 2009 I've had probably four ER trips due to AFib. Um, just because my heart, when, AFib is just when the arrhythmia. Obviously if you're on this you know what AFib is because you've had it, but your heart gets out of rhythm and it's uh, it's in a dangerous arrhythmia because if it lasts it can cause a blood clot which blood clots can cause strokes and strokes can cause you know death and other bad stuff so um, <clears throat> my issue is paroxysmal I want to say is how you say it I'm not positive on that don't quote me but it's um, I think it's just like occasional AFib that I get that's induced by their for me I've had issues with alcohol um, triggering it uh, a little bit of caffeine sometimes will kind of mess with it but it's usually alcohol or intense exercise for me which the intense exercise is something that I'm not really willing to give up so for me it was something that I researched and looked online I didn't see a lot of people that were in my similar you know age bracket that were had stuff online for it I saw some older people which is cool yeah, I get that but I knew they were doing um, procedures for it but I just kind of want to throw this out there so if there's somebody out there who's you know younger that's having an issue um, you know hopefully this you know finds you and you know you can use this to help make your own decisions so um, like I said I've had four ER visits uh, really quickly though if I'm looking pretty haggard right now it's because you're not allowed to shower I just had my procedure done if you can tell you're not allowed, not allowed to shower for a few days and this right here is uh, Probably uh, bedhead, hospital bedhead, and uh, yeah, looking pretty rough right now. But I can assure you, I'm feeling good. I just had my procedure done two days ago, and uh, I feel good. I mean, I feel pretty solid. I've got to take it easy for about a week to two weeks, um, just to let everything heal and kind of settle, and then supposedly you can get right back to kind of exercising. So stoked. Um, but just to get on the, with the procedure, I I was referred by another guy who um, he played in the NFL and he uh, played after his procedure too, he's still playing um, and he referred me to his electrophysiologist on the East Coast and you know because I'm out here in the West, I'm in California uh, you know I had them refer me to you know some really good uh, electrophysiologists out here at UCLA, Dr. Shiv Kumar and Dr. Visegi. Went out there, visited with them uh, did the research on it, um, you know, just to backtrack really quick, the last incident I had of, of AFib, I had to go get cardioverted, I don't know if you've had to have that done or if you've heard of it, but basically they, if, if an IV doesn't work to kick in the AFib back into sinus, normal sinus rhythm, then they have to cardiovert you, which is basically they try to shock your heart back into rhythm, which it's probably pretty procedural, pretty standard deal for the docs doing it, but, you know, I think last time I had it done, I was up in Canada, I was, you know, by myself, I was in this small hospital, and uh, the docs, you know, cardio to me unsuccessfully, unfortunately, and, uh, you know, I got shocked three times, and all I have now is like some, some patch tans, you know, to show for it, but... That was kind of my last straw. So when I came home, did the research, got with Dr. Shiv Kumar and Dr. Visegi in, at UCLA at the Arrhythmia Center, and uh, we we did the research on it. We put the Holter monitor on for 30 days, realized that intense exercise was still causing um, episodes for me of AFib, and I could feel it too. I could start to feel every year, just kind of since 2009, I just kind of kept feeling like I was getting more and more incidents of AFib. Like if I got working, you know, started working out too fast and didn't warm up thoroughly, it would kind of irritate it and, and start it off, and uh, my heart would kind of jump around a bit. 
So it was unsettling, and it was messing with my quality of life, and I just was over it. I was done. I, you know, it's like the bully, right, at the end of the street. You can keep taking the alley and keep trying to find different ways to school, but eventually one day the bully's going to get you. So you might as well just go meet him, you know, right off the bat and go whoop him, you know what I mean? So that's kind of what I was thinking of with this is like, hey, it's something that I feel like I'm eventually going to have to handle down the road. Might as well do it right now while I'm young and healthy. I mean, 31 years old, you know, in fairly good shape. Now is better than any time. So uh, once we realized that, you know, it was in exercise involved and that it was something for me worth, um, you know, taking the risk of, of going in through a procedure, which, you know, it's a procedure, but it's pretty gnarly. They go through your femoral veins, go through your neck, and they, they uh, snake these catheters into your heart. And so for me, they did it for mine. It lasted a little bit longer than normal, and uh, they basically snake these catheters in there, and they, they looked at my heart to make sure they induce the arrhythmia with the catheters, and then they um, check around with the imaging to see where the the disturbances are coming from, which cells, what parts of the heart. And then once they do, they basically seek those out and they zap those with the ends of the catheter, scarring them, which end up healing in three months, but it scars those areas down. And then after they heal, they no longer supposedly pick up that, that electrical signal, which is ideal. So my doc said it was a success. I did it just two days ago. You can see I've got one in my neck here. And, uh, you know, hey, I thought I had a stiff neck after sleeping on my buddy's couch about a week ago, you know. But uh, it's a little stiff, but it's not too bad. And um, I've got a couple in my femoral veins, but they're, you know, and we'll just say we'll leave that to the imagination. But uh, they're down there in the insertion spots. And, uh, yeah, I, mean, I, I, had, I had to have two uh, insertions, femoral veins, and one in my neck. And then... Uh, they just pretty much went in, zapped those areas, and, you know, when I woke up, I think I, you know, from the anesthesia I was under for a long time, I puked pretty heavily, and then that actually, the force of the puke popped open my femoral veins, which wasn't cool. I remember being kind of out of it, but I think there's like three guys scrambling. I don't know who they were, but thank you. They were scrambling to uh, kind of put some pressure on the, the veins and keep them from bleeding, and so, because those, if you bleed out on those, they bleed out quick, but um, they did a great job. The whole staff at UCLA did an amazing job. I just want to say thank you to all of them, Dr. Shiv Kumar, Dr. Fisegi. Uh, they put up with me and my ridiculousness, so. <clears throat> um, yeah, if you have any questions, though, just um, leave something in the comments below. I'll try to do my best to check up on it and uh, see if I can help answer any questions that you might have. I know it's kind of a, I know when you go in for the procedure, you, you know, somebody's working on your heart, you know, and you've, you're, or you're nervous. You think, hey, this could be the last time, you know, these things go through your mind. You have different thoughts, it puts a lot of things in perspective, and I know it can be pretty nerve wracking. So um, that's why I wanted to post this video, because I definitely was nervous about it, but I also was fed up, you know, I just was over it. So it was worth it for me to go have it done, and um, so far it seemed to be a success. So the only thing now after surgery is um, you just have to keep up on your blood thinners for like three months. I have to do shots in my stomach for about, I think, five days or a week just to get my blood nice and thin until the, the Coumadin, which is in pill form, kicks in. And then, uh, yeah, that's about it. Hopefully it works. You know, in three months it'll heal, and then... I should have a better idea of it then. I know sometimes it takes a few ablations to get it right. Hopefully it was a one-hitter quitter. And it's done because I'm not really feeling like going back in there for that. But, uh, yeah, that's about it. That's, you know, for me, like I said, I, one of my triggers was alcohol. You know, it, for me it was definitely something that my body was a little bit more sensitive to. That's kind of where I had my ER visits from, just being dehydrated, you know. They, I think they call it holiday heart. But basically, just it aggravated my my heart and, and disturbed the rhythm. And then, uh, and like I said, I had a kick in though a couple times when I was out being active, and it just was something that you know I was over. I needed to get fixed. So I hope this helps any of you who are out there uh, or have family members that are out there looking to uh, 
looking for options for AFib and uh, or if you're an athlete or younger, active, whatever. So um, thanks for your time. Hope this helps you out and uh, good luck. Bye.